across a world we live, in cities and villages, all part of a greater whole, but we are not alone. They come in herds, hives and swarms, tribes, packs and pairs, living in nature, members of society. Everywhere on Earth, rodents exist, making up over 40% of all mammal species. They've learned to adapt to nearly any environment, under any circumstances, from jungles and forests to snowy mountains and deserts, even human habitats. They are immediately recognizable for their sharp incisors, existing in pairs on both their upper and lower jaw, most being small, robust animals with short limbs and long tails. The smallest, the pygmy gerboa, being less than two inches long, weighing a tenth of an ounce. The largest, the capybara, being over four feet long and weighing up to 200 pounds. The most common of all rodents are the muroids, a diverse group of rodents, with over 1,300 species across six families, 19 subfamilies and 280 genera. They're also the largest single group of interrelated mammals including both new and old world mice and rats, as well as gerbils, muskrats, mole rats, hamsters, voles and lemmings. They can be found on every continent except Antarctica, deep in jungles and forests everywhere, as well as more open rural and urban areas and windswept deserts, generally being active year-round, often seeking warmth in humid housing in colder climates most being exclusively terrestrial, while a few may be semi-aquatic. All being small, short-limbed rodents distinguished for their adaptability, often omnivorous, an opportunistic diet, a pointed head, and sensitive whiskers, and quick speed. They range in size between a mere two inches long, as with some species of hamster, to up to two feet long, weighing four to five pounds, as with many muskrats. Most muroids are either nocturnal or crepuscular, foraging for food under the cover of darkness to avoid predation. Primarily resting during the day, though limited activity still remains common. Their diet ranging from seeds, fruit, leaves, shoots and roots, to insects and other invertebrates, as well as carrion. A few larger species targeting other smaller mammals as well. Their main sensory input being that of the sense of smell. They are often enlarged snout containing thousands of smell receptors, allowing the muroids to detect the faintest chemical signatures at great distances, able to locate potential food sources from hundreds of yards away with some species. While their sense of eyesight may vary greatly from acute to very poor, depending largely on their environment and lifestyle, most relying mainly on their keen sense of hearing as well for predator and threat detection, many having significantly well-developed hearing with large rounded outer ears capable of detecting the exact direction and distance of sounds well beyond the range of human hearing. While in nature, most muroids take shelter in cup-like nests inside crevices and burrows such as tree hollows and termite mounds. Many have adapted significantly to human habitation as well, hiding behind or under heavy furniture as well as in crawl spaces and cracks in the walls. Some, such as the mole rats, being burrowing rodents, though unrelated to true moles and naked mole rats, they live in intricately designed tunnel systems underground, dug out using their incisors, only rarely coming up above ground, with many species being completely blind. Most muroids have fixed permanent or transient territories and foraging grounds, often centered around a consistent source of food, generally being solitary. They may easily become territorial and defensive towards unrelated individuals, hissing or attacking any newcomers encroaching on their territory, most instead forming either monogamous long-term pairs or larger family groups, hamsters being particularly aggressive towards unrelated individuals while rats are outwardly more pro-social and inclined to share food sources. Many murals are highly vocal as a result, using a variety of crude vocalizations for communication due to their highly developed hearing, 
usually various squeaks in repeating patterns to signal their location and to identify themselves. Many utilizing sounds in the ultrasonic range as well as to increase audibility of a great distances, with some species producing more complex vocal patterns such as songs to attract mates during mating season, as well as using scent markings with designated scent glands and urine markings to delineate their territory. Muroids being generally intelligent for their relative size, exhibiting learning behavior as well as basic problem solving and advanced navigation techniques based on scents alone. Mating season may occur year-round for many species with multiple litters each year. Some, such as hamsters, entering estrus every four days, emitting powerful pheromones to signal her readiness, with peak reproductive activity being around summer to late fall for most, when food is abundant. The male typically initiating mating by seeking out a female and exhibiting some form of simplified courtship, often being simple greetings, mutual sniffing and limited vocalizations. Mating is often quick and repeated, after which the male may either remain in a monogamous pairing as with most hamsters, gerbils and muskrats, or as with many rats, the male leaves to seek out food or a new mate, leaving the female to give birth and take care for their young by herself. Gestation period are typically short, only a couple of weeks for some species. The female then gives birth in a secluded nest to a litter of anywhere between 2 to 25 young. Most muroid young are born naked and helpless, weighing as little as a hundredth of an ounce for smaller species. They depend entirely on their mother for survival, although the mother may occasionally prioritize her own safety over that of her litter. Many species noted for eating their young when threatened, recuperating energy in case of a sudden need for escape. Muroid young development continues rapidly over the first few days and weeks, often opening their eyes within the first two to three days for most species, weaning at anywhere between one week to two months, many permanently leaving the nest and reaching mature size at only one to two months of age, becoming sexually mature shortly thereafter, leaving their mother to establish a new territory of their own or seeking out a new nest while remaining in the larger shared family territory. Intergenerational interactions being highly limited past maturation, with some species not being able to recognize their own offspring at all after leaving the nest. And though lifespans may vary greatly between species, the vast majority of muroids only live for about a year due to predation. Their natural enemies including all forms of felines, dogs, wolves, raptors, snakes and lizards, being among the base prey and significant food source for most predators in the wild, as well as considered a significant pest in human environments, hunted and killed by the use of traps and poisons, due to their tendency to carry diseases. Many species of rats, being significant disease and parasite carriers, though most muroids are themselves highly resistant to a wide array of diseases including cancer, some species of common black or brown rat exhibiting a stronger immune system than that of any other mammal. Among the most uniquely specialized rodents we find the beaver, unrelated to the giant mole, also known as a mountain beaver. True beavers consist of only two species, the North American beaver, found across northern United States and Canada. And the Eurasian beaver, found throughout Central Europe, Scandinavia and Central Asia. Most closely related to pocket gophers and kangaroo rats, being among the largest rodents in existence. Adult males being up to 40 inches long, weighing up to 70 pounds. They are immediately recognizable due to their distinct appearance with their large, highly developed front teeth, flattened scaly tail, red brown or black fur, compact rounded body, short robust limbs, as well as their unique lifestyle, being semi-aquatic, spending much of their lives in the water. As despite their relatively slow speed on land, beavers are also exceptional swimmers. Thanks to their webbed hind feet and broad scaly tail are used for underwater locomotion. With an extended lung capacity additionally allowing them to stay underwater for periods of up to 15 minutes. But particularly notable is the natural trait of building elaborate dams and canals along riverbeds and streams. 
significantly shaping their environment in order to dam up water to form ponds deep enough not to freeze over completely during winter, as the beavers then build their nests adjacent to the pond. Nests known as lodges due to their intricate design of wood, which may often only be accessible from an underwater passage, protecting it from predation, using their extremely powerful and large front teeth to cut down even the toughest plant matter, both for use in construction and for food, felling entire trees, though they don't actually feed on the wood itself. Rather the cambium, the softer wood tissue close to the surface immediately under the bark, leaving a large chunk of the raw timber for lodge and dam construction. Preferring willow, alder, birch, maple, cherry and cottonwood trees, Additionally, eating water lilies, sedges, and pondweed. Using their clawed, dexterous forward digits to grasp the wood. Hauling materials either over land or floating it over the surface of the water. Their massive builds being a significant impact on their surroundings. Beaver ponds increasing not only water habitats for fish, insects, and waterfowl but also increasing surrounding stream flows by storing runoff in the rainy season, raising the groundwater level of the surrounding bodies of water, providing relief for hundreds of species of animals dependent on high water levels during droughts, as well as significant new breeding grounds and overwintering ponds for migratory fish such as trout and salmon, the felling of surrounding trees additionally promoting the growth of grass and shrubbery essential as cover for both birds and the insects they prey on. Unlike many other rodents of the northern hemisphere, beavers do not hibernate over winter, instead changing their diet to incorporate shrubs, saplings and branches that they may plant underwater in the mud near the lodge entrance, which may provide the only food available for the beaver as their pond may be frozen over to the point of isolation, the beaver inside of its lodge. Beavers have generally underdeveloped sense of eyesight as they typically have little use for it in the murky pond water relying instead on their sense of smell, touch and hearing for navigation and social interaction. As though beavers generally don't socialize with other unrelated beavers outside of mating season, they do remain in long-term relationships and family groups being highly territorial, building up mounds of sticks, twigs and wood shavings that they then mark with urine and by rubbing up against it with their scent glands signaling the age, sex and status of the individual as well as relationship status. As unlike other rodents, beavers are strictly monogamous, staying together for multiple breeding seasons after initial pairing. Though if the mate dies, they will usually attempt to find another mate by the next mating season. Mating season occurs only once a year and only for a period of between 12 to 24 hours. When the female comes into estrus for a single day between late December and May, the female signaling her readiness by excreting on nearby mounds that the male will then catch the scent of. In the case of first-time mates, the male will adopt a territory adjacent to as many young unmated females as possible, joining the territory of the first female accepting him, forming a larger shared family or paired territory. With a new joint family lodge built by the largest pond of the territory, mating itself is quick and commonly occurs in the water, Gestation periods last on average between 105 and 128 days, depending on the species. The female preparing a soft bed of foliage, sticks and twigs in the upper room of the lodge for birth giving. Typically anywhere between one to nine young or kits are born, depending on the availability of food and the overall health of the mother, though commonly only three or four at most. Unlike many rodents, the eyes of the kits are open from birth, they are covered with a soft juvenile fur, weighing about a pound each. Within 30 minutes of being born, they can already move around and swim along the surface of the water, able to hold their breath underwater within a month, by which time they are already well past weaning, digesting plant matter already at one to two weeks of age. The young are cared for extensively by both the parents, the mother beaver carrying her kits on her back whenever they get tired, the father beaver helping by bringing home food and teaching the kids how to swim, how to forage for food and how to build. Older siblings additionally assisting in the care of the new litter. Young beavers reach adulthood at between 18 to 22 months of age. 
At two years of age, they leave their parents' lodge to find a territory of their own, with most beavers only reproducing well into their third year. Beaver lifespans are generally relatively long, lasting up to 24 years in the wild, continuously growing throughout their lives, along with their front teeth, which continuously grow hard enamel to counteract all forms of wear and tear. Though they may often be targets of predators such as coyotes and mountain lions, black bears and particularly lone wolves, Squirrels are one of the most recognizable groups of rodents in existence. They are widespread, highly diverse family of small to medium-sized rodents, including tree squirrels, ground squirrels, flying squirrels, chipmunks, marmots, groundhogs, woodchucks, and prairie dogs with nearly 300 species overall across five subfamilies. Most closely related to the Dormouse and Giant Mole, they exist nearly worldwide, including Eurasia, Africa and the Americas, having been artificially introduced to Australia and its surrounding islands. They exist in nearly every type of environment, from tropical rainforest to stone deserts, though most commonly in coniferous and temperate leaf forests, anywhere their primary food source of seeds, berries and nuts may be found. While some species may also supplement their diet with insects, smaller animals and bird eggs, being highly opportunistic omnivores when their normally herbivorous diet is challenged. Excess food is often being stored in caches, such as hidden nooks and hollows in trees, even underground, often assisting in the reproduction of trees and plants by burying their seeds. Many species are also highly territorial, with fixed home ranges and individually preferred trees or burrows. They range from the smallest squirrel the African pygmy squirrel at mere three inches long, weighing a third of an ounce, to the largest, the Laotian giant flying squirrel at over three feet in length, while the alpine marmot is the heaviest at up to 20 pounds. Larger species as well as northern smaller species often using seasonal hibernation, feeding considerably during summer to sustain them over a period of reduced activity during the colder months, starting in late fall and continuing until spring particularly common for burrowing species. Most have slender bodies, with a bushy tail and large eyes, with hind legs commonly longer and stronger than their forelimbs, all covered in a soft, silky fur, either grey, brown, black or red, with smaller variations of white. Squirrels rely primarily on their superior sense of eyesight for navigation, foraging and to avoid predators, as well as strong sense of smell and hearing, being highly cautious of any unexpected nearby sounds and smells. Many species additionally have highly sensitive sense of touch with significant whiskers found on both their heads and limbs, helping them navigate through trees and burrows alike when visibility is reduced or otherwise obscured by foliage. Most squirrels being diurnal or crepuscular, often seen foraging in the early morning and late afternoon, unlike many other rodents, while flying squirrels are almost exclusively nocturnal, only juveniles and lactating females being partially diurnal. Ground squirrels in particular spending most of their time within their burrows in hibernation, only coming out for a few hours each day to forage for food which they then bring back to the burrow, while tree squirrels are considerably more active and less sedentary, continuously searching for food across the entirety of their home range. Social behavior may similarly vary between species. Ground-dwelling squirrels, such as ground squirrels and marmots, often being highly social, forming well-developed colonies centered on one or more families of interrelated individuals led by a dominant male. Families usually numbering between 5 to 10 or up to 20 individuals. Prairie dogs even forming large so-called town colonies, consisting of between 15 to 26 families further divided into wards of smaller clusters of family groups with overlapping territories, utilizing social grooming for colony cohesion, while tree-dwelling species are considerably more solitary, as well as the ground-dwelling groundhogs, though even they may group together in family group nests overnight. As such, communication between squirrels is extensive, although simplistic, mainly consisting of a variety of chirping and squeaking vocalizations for formal identification and to signal alarm, as well as body language and scent markings. Many squirrels using scent glands or urine markings on trees to delineate their territory, as well as to attract a mate. 
Mating season for most squirrels occur once or twice a year, depending on the species and age of the individual. Many younger females normally having only a single litter a year, often in late winter or early spring, while older squirrels may have a secondary litter in the summer, most ground squirrels being pelogenous with one male mating with several females, often in the form of harems, where the male will mate with a select few females repeatedly at the same time. Though a few species of marmot have been shown to form long-term monogamous pairs as well. While many tree squirrels are polyandrous, the female pursued by several males in competition with one another, mating with between 1 to 16 males each mating season during a limited fertile period. Mating is often preceded by a period of courtship, the male either courting the female through social grooming, calls and chasing, or by presenting her gifts of food. Mating itself is usually very quick and repeated until conception occurs. With non-social species, the male then leaves to seek out another mate or food, leaving the female to construct her own nest in a hollow tree or crevice to prepare for birth giving. Squirrel gestational periods typically lasting between three to five weeks depending on species. The female feeding constantly during this time to ensure that she has an ample supply of milk, often gathering food within her nest as well. Commonly between two to six young are then born, though up to nine are possible for some species. The young are born small, naked, toothless and blind, weighing less than a tenth of an ounce, the female often being the only primary caregiver of a young, nursing for a period of up to six to ten weeks. The young quickly developing with their first coat of fur emerging after two to three weeks, their eyes opening soon thereafter, developing all their teeth by a month old, at which point they may start consuming solid food and begin to venture out of the nest. Most species reaching adult size at between six months to a year, maturing around the same time, as females need to reach a minimum body mass before being able to enter estrus. Commonly the offspring either leaves the nest on their own at this point or are forcibly removed, with the female becoming increasingly hostile, particularly males being regularly forced out of the birth territory, while in more social species females may sometimes remain. Fatality rates among juvenile squirrels is high due to predation from dogs, cats, raptors and snakes. Squirrels are also significantly affected by diseases and parasites. Most squirrels thus don't survive past the first year, and due to their generally small size, may continue to be vulnerable to predation for the rest of their lives. Lifespans among adult tree squirrels is typically 5 to 10 years in the wild, 15 years for larger species. Squirrels, just like muroids and beavers, along with other rodents, form not only a base prey for apex predators, but a crucial component in their ecosystem at large. Through their foraging, as well as their direct intervention in shaping their surroundings, whether in large communities, smaller groups, or as loners and pairs, they are all members of a society, an animal society.